Hey, what's up guys? This is Zeeblon here. Welcome back to another episode of playing Legend of Gaming Heroes. So in today's episode, I wanted to focus on the Legacy Vault because it was introduced just today. If you take a look at the description in the news feed, it's basically a new vault that contains only a historical Gen 3 decks that matches the affinity and also the event. So for this case, in this event, it will contain the Dark Slayer um, cards that are from Championship 3. And this vault is a little bit different in that the progress you make is permanent. So what happens is at the end of this event, it'll come back again. Uh, it'll be here every event, but the next time we have a Dark Slayer event, whatever tier you pull up to, it will stay there. And so it says here, if you drew up the tier four this time, uh, the next time that we it comes around, uh, it will start at tier five. So it got me thinking, well, what's different about this vault and is it worth going after? Because if you take a look at the pricing structure, you'll notice that it actually doesn't say anything in the, um, in the information here, but it does tell you all the content that's in here. So you can see here, it's just the event cards and also the relics for that particular event. And there's nothing else. There's no evolution coins, there's no keys or anything like that. And as such, there is only a total of 41 cards to draw from. So from there, I wanted to uh, show a little bit of a, you know, like math to to help you understand, like, what does that mean, really? Like, what are your chances of pulling something good? And so first, you want to understand, like, if you have a particular card that you actually care about, you're not going to have a very good chance still, even though there's only 41 cards in there. So what that what that means is at every tier, uh, as you continue to draw from the uh, vault, your chances will increase, but drawing the exact card that you want on tier one is gonna be a 2.4% chance, okay? So kind of wanted to, to help you understand, and then as you go higher, the number of cards will go down, but again, the, drawing the exact card that you want is going to be low chances until the only guarantee is when you get to the very last tier. That's the only time you're going to be guaranteed to get what, exactly what you want, even at uh, tier 42. And I say tier 42 because there's 41 cards, so basically full, pull it 40, uh, 40, uh, 40th tier, uh, pulling it 40 times, you're only getting 50% chance. So getting exactly what you want is going to be difficult. So instead, you have to think about well, what is it that you're looking for? Are you, are you looking for a you know gold card and if so you're gonna have a higher chance of getting it. if you don't care you just want one of the gold cards then you actually have a 70 percent chance at tier one all right and let's say that you draw nothing but gold cards um then what ha what that means is you can actually go up to 29 tiers okay of getting nothing but gold cards and you'll have pretty good chance of getting them. That is because there's 29 cards out of a total of 41. So that's why you have a much higher chance of pulling these. And so you can see here, the, the chances are, are relatively high that you're going to get gold card uh, for your first couple of t uh, pulls and contrast it to a silver card, which is a support card or an event card. Uh, that is, you know, you start at 29.27%. So there is still, you know, a 30% chance that you may get a silver card and, you know, it, it decreases from there. But I guess from that perspective, this is a good opportunity to get one of those older uh, Generation 3, you know, Master Collection card or Ultra Rear card or a Relic, okay, uh, if you care about them. But keep in mind that if you do want something, if there's only one of the one or two cards you want, this may not be the right place for you because if you think about the, the chances of you getting what you want and don't forget the cost. So the pricing structure wasn't uh, listed, but it follows the same pricing structure as a regular vault. And so at tier one, you're gonna start 300 gems. And then as you go up, you kind of know uh, how much you're, you're gonna be spending. We're gonna be going at a thousand gems, then 2,400. By tier four, we're spending 4,900 gems. But at, by tier four, really, you're still only going to have a 2.63% chance of actually getting the card that you want. At this point though, in tier four, you may have about a 68% chance assuming you've gotten gold cards. Okay, And the way this works is because of the, the fact that every time you draw a card from the vault, it will decrease the total number of cards. Your chances, so let's say you pull a gold card and then you pull a silver card the next time, your your chances of pulling a gold card next actually goes up a little bit because the total number of cards has decreased. 
while the total number of gold cards hasn't. And so this is the worst, I guess this is the, 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 the scenario where you pull nothing but gold cards, this is what it's going to look like. If you pull nothing but silver cards, this is what's going to look like. And if you, if you break it down a little bit further, out of the 70% chance of you pulling a gold card, you're actually most likely going to be getting a relic at 34.15% chance. So by tier one, you're most likely going to be pulling a relic and then you're going to uh more be more likely to full, pull a master collection card because of the existence of uh, shiny master collection cards in there uh so if you take a look at um you know if you take a look at the rewards here the rewards here uh some of the cards have just master collection card and just the ultra rare card but you can see here there are shiny masters in here so this is the shiny for example hymnock and then there is also the shiny uh, Lady Lionheart, and also the shiny uh, Lord Executioner Renz. So the existence of the shiny uh, Master Collection cards means that the chance of you pulling a Master Collection card goes up. And then if you look at the Ultra Rare card, that means there's only six total Ultra Rare cards in the entire vault. There's only six of them. So your chances of pulling them is going to be pretty low. Um, at only 14% chance at tier one. And, you know, it, it does go up if you, like the the more that you pull gold card, like master collection cards, uh, the higher the chance of you pulling in an ultra rare, of course. But, you know, chances are you probably aren't going to try to empty the vault. Uh, so by around tier four or so, you should expect that, you know, third of the time, you're probably going to get relic. And so you're expecting to get, you know, more relics than 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 master uh, than master collection cards. Uh, more likely to get a master collection card than an ultra rare card. And also, you know, about a third of the time, you probably will pull a either a support or a event card. And I'm, I didn't do the breakdown of the support or the event card because they're they're silver cards. They're, they're not going to be as um, you know as worth your investment. And if you think about it, if you really wanted to, to empty everything. It's going to cost you 207,000 gems, all right? And what's more realistic, a lot of people would go probably tier 6 or tier 7, and that is still a 20,000, 21,000 uh, investment for your gems. That that basically puts you right at this bucket here where if you're hunting for a particular card, uh, your, your chances are not great. Okay, your chances aren't great um, for the specific card that you, you care about, but if you are looking for just a, any, any card that you want, then uh, your chances of getting the gold is going to be a little higher. So now let's take this uh, math, let's take this math to a test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open, uh, so I'm going to open two tiers. So based on the math, I'm hoping that, you know, at least... I should be able to see two gold cards and out of that I'm probably going to be more likely to see either two relics or one relic and one master collection card. Uh, so let's see how our luck turns out. And I don't really, uh, you know, out of all of these cards, I would say that the one I really, really would uh, want to see are going to be, you know, I would really like to see if I can get another Bio Blitzer and another militant maven personally because i already have it at four stars uh but the chance of me getting those two back to back is going to be extremely low like i, I as you see here there's only about two percent chance for me getting exactly what i want right out of that uh you know besides that i don't have you know i don't have lady lionheart and i don't have um Queen Mother of Magic. I also don't have the Princes of Pain and also the Lord Execution of Renz. So I'll be okay getting those also. And getting a Relic isn't a bad option either, especially if I can make an Ultimate Relic out of it. So I think that personally, getting a couple of tiers is not too bad, but my problem is going to be the cost and we'll talk about it a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, open up two tiers right now. Let's see if my, you know, my estimation is accurate here. So we'll go to tier one here and let's see if we first, if we get a gold card. And so we do get a gold card. We have 70% chance of getting a gold card and there's a higher chance of getting a relic, right? And so that that's what we talked about. There's a 70% chance that we will get a gold card. 
and out of the, the the chances of you know once we pull a gold card there is a higher chance of pulling a relic all right so that's our first one and now let's go to tier two and so tier at tier two uh you know our chances of pulling a gold card is still at 70 percent. we still have a 70 percent chance of pulling a gold card and so let's see if that is uh, still true and let's see when we pull this gold card whether it's going to be a relic or a master collection card or i could be lucky and pull an ultra rare all right so here's another gold card and i got a master collection card unfortunately it is one of the it is the oldest one on their list the grandier luden right so if we take a look at the math here what we saw was a uh, 70 percent chance of getting a gold card and out of there uh, we had a 32 percent chance of getting a relic or 20 percent of percent of getting a master collection card and so i did end up getting the master collection card uh in this case so i thought that all right that's not i guess that's not too bad it's just that i didn't get the card that i wanted and that is because i only have two percent chance of getting that and so this is you know um hopefully with this in mind uh this helps you set expectations for what you might pull when you go into this vault of course, as you go deeper into the vault, the more likely you're going to get what you want. But the problem here is the cumulative cost of the gems here starts going really high. So I pulled two tiers this uh, event. The next time the Dark Slayer comes around, um, it's going to start at tier three. So I am going to have to spend another 1400 to begin with. And my total investment into that vault would be at 2,400 gems. And they also mentioned that they're going to continue to add uh, the cards from, you know, the, the current event into the next vault. So all of the cards from this event are going to be put into this legacy vault. And so it's going to, you know, increase the number of cards. Unless they remove the old cards like they do with the proving grounds, what ends up happening here is uh, the number will grow and the percentages will start going down. All right. So if that is the case, then I would say that uh, right now, during the first event that this is released in, this is the highest chance of you pulling some gold cards. As the, as the number goes up, if we don't see the old cards dropping off and they just continue to put new cards in there, then we will start seeing a diluted pool of cards in here. So instead of 29 gold, we might see, um, you know, we might see for 33 gold, but we also at the same time will see uh, 14 silvers the next time around. Well, that will increase your chances of pulling the silver and decreasing your chances of pulling the gold. And so it's going to continue moving forward and it will continue to further decrease the chance of you pulling what you want. And so my my take on this is, you know, I think that it's on, on, the, on the one hand, a much better option, a much better way for you to get more useful stuff. OK, no more coins, no more, you know, keys and no more uh, just things that that we just don't care about. So on the one hand, this is really great. I think this is a good direction. Uh, on the other hand, I think that the pricing structure is too high for this type of uh, vault. And also, depending on what they do the next time Dark Slayer comes around, uh, this may very well become a very diluted pool as time goes on and this will not be a good uh, investment for us moving forward so i i would uh, like to know more details as to whether they're going to rotate in the cards and rotate out the older ones that we don't care about or they're going to maintain the entire pool of generation three cards because um that is going to impact i think our decisions on how we want to invest our gems and also it's not as friendly to the free to play players because the the gem the cost to pull these tiers is, is still too high but anyways i just wanted to you know use this information to help you uh, make a decision on what you want to do and also set expectations there uh if you wanted to uh to see and get access to this uh, visualization i've created it is i'm going to have the link to that in my description below i just created this today but i'll publish it and so you'll have access to it and you can play around with it as well so that's going to be it for uh, this episode here uh thanks a lot for watching hope this is helpful uh, take care and i'll see you next time see ya